Over the last five episodes, you've seen us thrash to get this Camaro built. And believe it or not, it came together in two weeks. And it's now time to take it out for a full thrash road test and review. But before we do that, I want to take you through some of the cosmetics. So what I want people to understand is that we did a full mechanical on this thing. We didn't do a full cosmetic restoration, even though we did update some stuff. If you look at the front end, we've got the marker lights and the fog lights from Classic Industries. We added some cool color change gold pinstriping to cover up the, the really kind of checked out gray. We added some knockoff 17 inch IROC wheels, some beautiful gold emblems from Classic Industries. But let's address this, the Edelrock, okay? Edelrock, well, Edelbrock, small block under the hood, more power, more performance, more everything. And then let's address the TKX 5-speed. Well, now we're rowing gears. We don't have that old slush box, right? So we wanted to give a nod to those guys because you know what? They threw stuff at this car and the improvement, well, you're going to see that very shortly when we take it out for a test drive. Before we dive back in, we wanted to bring back Gabe Flores from Classic Industries. Gabe is a car guy of the highest order. So when we approached him with the idea of rehabbing, not restoring our IROC, he knew exactly what parts would deliver the highest visual impact. Ultimately, like as you're, you're seeing, all these little things, when they come together, can really transform the look and feel of a car especially a model from the 80s, something that you're not doing a full nut and bolt restoration, probably, um, but you know you do things that can really enhance and bring back that, that uh, curb appeal that the car originally had when it was brand new. With everything that's come together so far, it, it's obvious that you guys have injected a whole new life into this car. It's something that you can run hard, drive hard, enjoy, open up the throttle, bang gears, and really enjoy it without the concern that, oh, I got a rock chip. Or, or, you know, oops, I may have bumped a, a, a shopping cart at, at, the, at the grocery store. Something you can really enjoy and not be overly concerned about. Oh, I had been waiting a while to drive this thing. <laughs> Man, what a difference. What a difference. One of the coolest parts about doing a build like this is starting with something that you can baseline, that you know is kind of worn out and at the end of its life cycle, and then interjecting some new life into it. Because what you're doing is you're taking that vehicle, sprinkling a little fairy dust, and by fairy dust, I mean a brand new Edelbrock small block, like new suspension, exhaust, transmission, and all of a sudden, that one vehicle that most people would be ready to discard becomes something wonderful. Let's talk about this new Tremec TKX 5-speed. You know, this the transmission itself is such a giant leap forward for the fact that with its new small and compact case, it fits in just about anything. You don't have to cut the tunnel and it, sh it shifts absolutely beautifully. I mean, if you look at the stick in this thing, I'll be honest, the stick that we have in this thing is a bit too long. We're gonna shorten this up. So right now, the throws are really long. However, the shifts are like super crisp. Like this, with a little bit of a short shifter in it, you get this sucker on track or an autocross. <laughs> You know, having been around muscle cars for a long time and reviewing so many over the years, you kind of go through the different transmissions. You drive T5s, T56s, TKO 500s, 600s, and it's really nice when you see the evolution of a product. And it, it kind of makes you smile because you know the industry is still there. The industry is still backing the product. This new TKX is really a nice leap forward. I mean, the shifts are crisp. Um, the clutch engagement is fantastic. I mean, you can go into a corner, accelerate out. You don't have, I mean, it's just, it's really like a butter shifter. 
And I have to applaud Tremec for doing this because they made a, a great effort to impress the enthusiast. Another wonderful thing is American Powertrain. One, the customer service is kick-ass. Two, when you call them, they ask you exactly what you want, what you're looking for, what you want the vehicle to do when you know when you call up and, you, and you're asking for a transmission. So like, if I call American Powertrain and I'm like, listen, like perfect example is this car. We've got an 87 IROC. We're dumping a 350 into it. Um, you know, about 400 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque or so. What application do I use? They ran down the list. They said, this is what you have to look for. We feel that this is going to be the best application for what you're doing. And you know what? They were spot on. This thing is great. Great. I'm so impressed. If you like to drive cars and you go from an auto to a manual, especially in a car like this, it changes the entire car. The whole personality changes. The driving experience completely changes. And now you're, you go from this kind of mild-mannered thing to this engagement machine that just elicits smiles and fun. And like I said, <laughs> it's, it's just like you turn into an instant four-year-old and it's, it's just, it's just straight fun, man. It's just fun. So you might've noticed on the side of this thing, it says Edelbrock. And the reason for that is under the bonnet, we've got an Edelbrock ProFlow 4 XT small block. That means 380 horsepower, 401 pound-feet of torque. Now that's that's a pretty decent step up from the you know the tune port 5.7 in here with like 225 horsepower and 330 pound-feet of torque or whereabouts in that range. You know, in a car like this, you have to adjust what you think is good power, right? I always say that the sweet spot for me is between like. I don't know, 350 and 450 horsepower and around 400 to 450 pound-feet of torque for a street car because you can use all of that power without getting yourself in trouble, right? You can, you can hammer out of a corner, right? Grab another one, but it's not enough that you're getting wheel spin at like 40 or 50 miles an hour. And when you're talking about a muscle car, you're talking about a nice sports car, that's exactly what you want, especially, especially if you decide to go to the racetrack or you decide to go to the autocross. Another part about the Edelbrock kit is the technology that they impart. Now, obviously, the fuel injection is just fantastic, right? Gone is carburation, and now you have a start every single time, beautiful engine. Combine that with this really trick tablet that they provide you, which lets you sync up via Bluetooth. You've got your tack. You've got your oil pressure gauge. You've got, you know, air fuel ratio and every other thing you can want. Plus, you can adjust everything on the fly as you're driving. It's a quick learning, intuitive system, and it, it provides the driver with another level of engagement. You know, we're, we're driving a 35-year-old Camaro, but with the tech that we have, it's got this bridge between old-school analog and modernism, right? Um, you know, we still have all the fun stuff that we want. We have our air conditioning, we have our power windows and all that stuff. And yes, obviously, duh, musto, they've been around since like the 1950s and that's great. What's best is it's a great marriage between the analog driving experience and new digital technology. Let's talk about package. Let's talk about the entire package, right? When you decide to build a car, or update a car, you have to ask yourself, what do I want it to do? What's the goal of this vehicle? For us, the goal was to have daily driver slash occasional track day car slash autocross car slash reliable slash all the amenities that goes around a corner and handles well. Sounds easy, right? Not that easy, right? Now, I say this all the time and people get mad at me. Like, if you were to do this with an old school muscle car, something from the 60s, even the early 70s, old school muscle cars are really bad. Like, they wallow in corners, the brakes suck. Like, they're just they're fun and they're nostalgic and that's where you get your enjoyment out of it um, and they are brutally fast to an extent but it's old school fast it's mechanical fast the problem with that is taking taking that power and getting it to the pavement and that's one of the biggest issues with any vehicle right you know if, if you decide to go to an autocross and you have 400 horsepower well how do you make it stick the cool part about the IROCs back in the day is that they were actually really good handlers. They had great suspension. They had high quality shocks on them. They had a, a torque arm pan head bar. 
and, and they were really set up to kind of go around a corner. Now, what we did to this car was just enhance that, right? We called our friends at Summit. They sent us some really, really trick stuff from BMR. We've got Coney Yellows up front in the rear, new springs, which drop it about, eh, about an inch. So the ride height looks fantastic. And like, we're going through sweepers right now. And let's face it, this thing sticks. And we didn't go crazy with wheels and tires. I mean, we went up one size in the tires. We're still running like a, a 245 series tires, but we went from a 16 to a 17 inch wheel, a little bit bigger. The other thing we added are the QA1 sway bars, both front and rear. Now, if you look at the front sway bar, it's like a mag light. That sucker is big. And, and what they do both front and rear is we kind of quell the body roll. So like, if you pitch this into a corner, the Camaro sticks nicely. And again, we didn't go crazy with wheels and tires. We've got some decent BFGs on this thing. They stick well, but if we were to go forward with this car, which we will in that, you'll see, we're gonna do some more upgrades. So one, the brakes. Let's let's address the, the elephant in the room or the lack of the elephant in the room. IROX came with 10 and a half inch rotors in these tiny little calipers. I gotta be honest, they were under brake from the factory. This is not a secret. Almost every person who owns an IROC or a Camaro knows this. If you're going to upgrade, what I would do personally is I would bounce these to an 18 inch wheel. I'd go with like a 13.3, 13.4 inch rotor, possibly a nice two pot or a six pot Brembo caliper or something along those lines, like a Willard or something like that. The other thing is if you get more meat on these cars, now I know you could put a 275 on these cars with the, with the correct backspacing or wider. I would personally go with a squared stance. You run a 275 squared stance on this thing, then all of a sudden you've got something that helps you put the power to the pavement and that you don't have to worry about anything. But as is right now, like, I mean, we're going through these switchbacks and I mean, the car handles beautifully. Like there's nothing here that makes me go, oh, be careful. The Coney Yellows are great. The BMR stuff is great. The QA1 stuff is great. Again, throw it into a corner, pitch it into a turn. It's a solid setup, man. And again, budget friendly, quick to install, solid results. Now, obviously with any muscle car, one of the biggest things, sound, right? We have a really, really nice set of ceramic coated headers from Summit, along with a Hooker Super Comp 3 exhaust system. Now, the nice part about this exhaust from Hooker is that there's no drone, right? There are so many other exhausts out there that you get that resonance between say 55 and 60 or 35 and 45. And to an extent, it makes the car undrivable. It's just, it's deep and throaty. It's not obnoxious. That's a very rare thing, man. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with the way that this car sounds. Absolutely thrilled. You know, keeping a car like this cool, especially if you're gonna autocross or track day it, that's a massive, massive thing. US Radiator solved that problem by giving us a beautiful brand new radiator that we dropped in. Um, I mean, temps right now, we've been boogieing this thing for, I don't know, the better part of an hour, and we're right at like 190 degrees and it hasn't moved. You know, when you get into the hotter weather, especially you run in like all your accessories like AC and stuff like that, that's something that you have to keep into the back of your mind. So US Radiator, thank you. You solved any problem that we, we thought we had. You just kind of changed up one of the issues that we thought was going to be in the back of our head, so we appreciate that. So at day's end, what did we wind up with? Well, aside from a visually appealing IROC, right? I mean, you look at the outside, we changed the entire look and feel of this car by not doing that much, and that makes a big difference. We've got a great car that you can row through the gears, that has plenty of power, that's fun, that's enjoyable, and that you don't have to worry about. You can still take this and you can drive it to the supermarket. God forbid you have it off on the autocross or the racetrack and you ding or twist something. It's not that expensive to fix, but more importantly, it's the enjoyment level. I mean, first, listen, two, experience, three, smile, right? That's what we've accomplished and couldn't be happier. Is there a little more room for work? Sure there is but the Edelrock is staying in the fleet. We're gonna keep updating this thing and we're gonna keep enjoying it. And we're gonna bring you more content on it. So stay tuned with Hemmings. I promise you, 
you're gonna fall in love with this Camaro just like we did. <laughs> All good stuff. Obviously, if you're digging on this video, hit that like button, subscribe to us, and stay tuned because we're gonna bring you more great content right here from Hemings. Yeah.